What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing for you of the iPad 3G Plus Wi-Fi, although for brevity, we'll just call it the iPad 3G. The box looks almost identical to the iPad Wi-Fi model. In fact, at the top, it still just says iPad. It doesn't even say AT&T there. Uh, so this is running on AT&T's network. This is the 32 gigabyte model. You've probably seen the box many times before. You got a picture of it on the front iPad on the side, some specs on the back, and really the only way to know that it's 3G is right there, 32 plus 3G. And that is about it. So let's go ahead and dig in. Of course, we'll use the big old knife to flip this over and cut the plastic. We'll be doing a full this battery of tests, if you will, comparing this to the Wi-Fi model, see if there's a difference in battery life, performance, internet speed. I'm just putting it through the general paces like we usually do uh, in our videos. So rip off the plastic, that off to the side. Here's the box, comes right up. Just a little bit of cardboard right there. And here is the iPad 3G. Sitting right on top, push it off to the side for just a minute. I'll keep digging in and see what else we get in the box, so this should be very familiar. Of course we have the power cord and USB. And this should be exactly the same as the Wi-Fi model with the one exception of the SIM removal tool because this does have a micro SIM card. Essentially it's like a regular SIM card, just a bit smaller. And you get sort of your fingertips and iPad. Although, and you do get some stickers too, in case you're wondering. So go ahead and close that. And uh, the 3G model is about $130 premium over the non-3G model. So push the box off to the side and let's take a look at the iPad 3G. So now that we got all the unboxing stuff out of the way, let's take a look at the iPad itself. It is highlighted by a 9.7 inch capacitive touchscreen, which really takes up almost the entire device. Got a bit of a black bezel around it and some chrome sort of rimming. It's got a screen resolution of 1024 by 768, and it's got 132 pixels per inch. It supposedly has an oleophobic screen, which means it'll avoid fingerprints, but if you've ever used an iPad, you'll notice it is a fingerprint magnet. So, We've got your iDevice typical button. You've got the home button right there. On the left hand side, you have a micro SIM tray. That's where you'd put in that SIM removal tool and pull out that micro SIM. Essentially, it looks like a regular SIM card, but shrunk down. Actually, you can cut regular SIM cards to be the same size as micro SIM and work in these. On the right hand side, you've got your standard array of iPad buttons. You've got your volume up and down and your screen rotation lock. On the top, you've got a lock and power. 3.5 millimeter headset jack, which is not recessed. And you may notice this big black bar across the top. That is actually, if I turn it over, where the 3G radios reside. So you can actually get a little better 3G reception if you're trying to come through uh, the aluminum here on the back. And I should probably say that it's not chrome around the side, it is aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, and that's really the, the big differences here. The other difference in addition to the 3G radio versus the just Wi-Fi iPad, uh, this actually has assisted GPS in it. So it has a GPS chip to help get a better sort of location on where you are. The irregular iPad uses the cell tower to sort of get your GPS configuration. Uh, and speaking of the iPad Wi-Fi, let's go ahead and bring that into frame so you can see the difference between the two. So here, I'll turn that on so they look the same. Here is the or here are the two iPads side by side. You really can't see any difference or notice any difference. I guess the only way that you can tell from the top is that this is a little bit broken up by the black. On the back, you can definitely see a difference. You've got that sort of two-tone look. I think the iPad Wi-Fi only has a little cleaner lines, doesn't have to have that black bar, but again, no 3G radio and uh, no Wi-Fi. From a thickness standpoint, they are exactly the same thickness. You can see right there, there's really no difference. Uh, Apple claims 10 hours of battery life on each when just using Wi-Fi and about nine hours when using the 3G. And if you're curious about the 3G data plans, at least on AT&T, $30 is gonna get you a truly unlimited plan where you can download and watch whatever you want in the truly unlimited sense. And uh, about half of that 15 bucks is gonna get you 250 megabytes of data or you can always add on more if you go over and they'll tell you when you go over. And these are not in addition to your cell phone data plans. They don't go on that plan. Uh, it's a separate bill. You actually activate all that stuff right from the iPad. So I'll put these two head to head and show you speeds. And of course we'll run the iPad 3G through our full 
battery of tests, if you will, uh, to see how it performs. If you guys have any questions or things you want to see, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will check them out. Anyway, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. For all your tech news and to create your own tech blog and make a couple bucks, be sure to check out technobuffalo.com. And for exclusive content, be sure to check me out at Twitter at twitter.com slash John4Lakers. Anyway, I'm John Rettinger and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.